Hi, my name is Ramtin Rampur, and today we are going to show you how to configure the IP pass-through feature on our hardware appliances. What is IP pass-through? IP pass-through is a feature that allows your primary site router to utilize the Open Gear's internal cellular modem as a backup WAN connection. We are essentially lending our cellular IP to the downstream router to use as a backup path to the internet. All right, let's take a look at this diagram. On the left side, you can see there are users, clients, or workstations that are sitting behind the network. Uh, these could be credit card machines, an email server, uh, a person's computer that just simply needs access to the internet. Now, a normal path would be for the traffic to go through the switch to the router and then make it to the internet. In this scenario, we've lost connection uh, through the normal path, and this is where IP pass-through comes in. So the open gear essentially passes its cellular IP to the downstream router and acts as another hop. So this way the router can still maintain its connectivity to the internet through the open gear device and the credit card machines can continue operating, emails can continue without any interruption. On top of providing internet connectivity to the router, IP pass through allows a remote admin to connect back to the open gear interface through some intercept ports and actually allow you to console into your routers and switches to verify if there's anything you can do to recover connectivity through normal means. If not, you can continue operating on IP pass through until the broadband connection is uh, recovered, or you may be able to fix the problem by rebooting a switch or making configuration changes on your router. All right, now that we've covered the high level functionality, let's go ahead and configure IP pass through. All right, let's go ahead and configure this option through the GUI. First thing we want to do is go to configure, network resilience, and then IP pass through. Now, if you notice the interface here is selected as net two, that is actually the interface that I'm using to directly connect to the downstream router. So I'm going to leave this as is, and then I'm going to go ahead and click the enable button. As you can see, there's a configuration validation list that pops up. For this demonstration, I went ahead and completed most of these ahead of time, such as enabling the cellular interface, but I would recommend that you make sure everything has a checkbox before you actually proceed to enabling this feature. Forwarding between the cellular and downstream interfaces is not enabled. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and do this right now. So for that, we need to go to the firewall page. We're going to go to interzone policies because what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that the cellular interface can communicate to the net two interface and vice versa. So we're going to call this um, F2C for fail to cellular and we'll give it a description of IP pass through. Now for our firewall zones, the net two sits on the LAN zone, which you can change. And we want it to be able to leave out of cellular that, that traffic. And vice versa, we want the cellular traffic, which is the cellular zone, to be able to make it to the LAN zone, which has the Net2 interface residing on it. So we'll go ahead and complete this configuration, hit apply, and navigate back to the IP pass-through page. As you can see, the status is set back to disabled because we never clicked applied before we left the page. So we're gonna go ahead and click enabled. Now, firewall configuration is considered valid, and I have checkbox across the board, which means I can proceed with finishing the configuration here. So let's go ahead and talk about some of these options. The downstream MAC address is used if you have multiple devices that may be requesting a DHCP IP addresses. In my particular case, since I have the downstream router directly connected to the Net2 interface, I don't actually need to define the downstream MAC address since there won't be more than one device requesting a DHCP IP. The HTTPS intercept port is actually the TCP port that you want to configure that the open gear device will intercept new incoming connections from the outside to actually provide you access to the open gear UI itself so you can console in. Uh, just to quickly go back to the diagram, this is what the network admin would use to be able to access the device. Now this also assumes that you have a public, uh, public IP address or a IP address that you can access, your network admin can access. So in this same case, I'm just going to go ahead and use 443. Now the SSH intercept port is the same thing. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it empty for now. 
Now the access control is for the intercept ports specifically. Now the reason we have the access control is once we actually pass the IP address to the downstream router, we no longer control that IP address, which means that we no longer control the ACLs um, of any traffic coming in or leaving. However, because we are configuring an intercept port, we can configure a set of ACLs that are directly and only applied to this particular TCP port. For this particular demonstration, I'm gonna go ahead and leave them empty, but if you would like, you could configure something like a 000 slash zero to block everybody and then uh, go ahead and configure your desired set of IP addresses that you want allowed. All right, now that everything is configured, we're gonna go ahead and simply click the apply button and watch the Cisco device get the public IP address of the Open Your Console server simply through the network. All right, we're gonna go ahead and click apply here. And we're gonna go ahead and bring up our Cisco device. So this Cisco device essentially has a, um, it's one of its ethernet interfaces configured in DHCP client mode and it's waiting for an IP address. Now, as you can see, there was an IP address assigned to this router, which means that the open your device has now passed its IP to the downstream router. And we can even go a step further and go ahead and test traffic. So we can go ahead and just ping uh, Google's DNS. And as you can see, now we have access to the internet, which means that operation would resume immediately. All right, let's go ahead and bring a browser back up here and try to access this 166.203.96.232 address. We're getting a warning because opening your devices by default have a self-signed certificate. So we're gonna go ahead and proceed. And now we have access to the opening your device over the cellular interface. The benefit of this is the remote admin can now go ahead and access the ports. So just to give an example, the same router that we had here, we're gonna go ahead and jump back into it. But now we're accessing this router over the cellular interface of the Open Gear device, even though the exact same router is using the Open Gear's cellular IP address to be able to access the internet. So we can go ahead and uh, run our ping again just to make sure that the device still has access to the internet, and it does. This concludes our GUI demonstration. The next step is to go ahead and jump into the CLI and just to cover some high-level configuration of IP pass-through over the command line interface. We'll come back, and here's how you can enable IP pass-through through the CLI configuration. Now, the first thing I wanna do is at the bottom of the screen, I'm gonna go ahead and quickly connect to our downstream router. I did disable IP pass through, so I should no longer be able to ping the internet. As you can see, I'm not able to ping it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and leave this as is. I'm just gonna quickly exit to just reset the page and leave it until IP pass through is enabled. Now for the CLI method, the first thing you wanna do is just go ahead and simply type config to jump into the config shell. In order to get to the IP pass-through functionality, uh, what I can do is just simply type IP and hit tap twice. You can see that the next path or the tree is IP pass-through. So I'm just going to jump in to IP pass-through. Now from here, uh, there's a bunch of different functions and uh, options that I can choose. I can do help, I can configure the MAC address, the service intercepts, but all we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and do enable. And we can actually do uh, show enabled. You can see here that it's false, meaning that it's currently disabled. So I can go ahead and type in enable true enter. That's all I really need to do. So I'm just gonna jump back up to the top and apply all. The apply all functionality took place. IP pass through is being enabled. And uh, that is evident by the network interface coming up on the Cisco router. So it's gonna take about 10, maybe 15 seconds. The open gear is gonna pass its cellular IP down to the router, and we're gonna go ahead and verify connectivity at that point. There is the public IP address. 
now available for the router to utilize. So the very last step that we need to do is we can go ahead and jump out of this configuration since we no longer need it and go ahead and enable and ping. The ping is successful, meaning that this router now has access to the internet within a matter of seconds. And one last item is if you prefer to make configuration changes directly through the API interface, uh, I'm going to go ahead and quickly show you where you can find how to do that. You can go ahead and navigate to ftp.openair.com forward slash download forward slash API. Navigate to Operations Manager since this particular device is an Operations Manager. And then we're going to go ahead and click on the HTML to take a look at some samples. From here, simply find IP Pass Through since that's the functionality we're going to use. Click on IP Pass Through. And you can see you can get current configuration using the Git. Or you can go ahead and use the put option to actually configure the device. This gives you a great example of descriptions as well as a sample that you can go ahead and utilize. That is the completion of our demonstration. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us using the links below and have a wonderful rest of your day.